fifth wedding anniversary. You just got off a plane this morning, but you landed in. We landed in Seville, ended up going to uh, Marrakesh, Morocco yeah. afterward. Landed in Seville, though, and ACDC was there, my husband's favorite with band. Axl Rose. With Axl Rose and, and Angus. It was amazing, and we got tickets because they released them last minute. So yeah. we got to go. My husband was in heaven. Seriously, Aww. heaven. Nice to the <laughs> How was it? It was amazing, and 80 euro. I mean, Jeff said to me, he goes, we couldn't buy those in Canada for that kind of was price. Was it good as the lead singer? Unbelievable. I thought I was going to hear Guns N' Roses all the time, yeah. you know, cause, because he's a front man yeah. for them. And no, nope, I heard, I heard ACDC in its true form. It was amazing. Cool. Should have told your husband you fixed that for it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I should have. Yeah, I, I wish the band I had. Set it up. Yeah, okay, I wish. Well, let's get on to this destination. Where are you taking yes. to us today? We're going to take you to northern BC. And nice. this is such a special place. People mm -hmm. come from all over the world, and it's in our own backyard. So we're going to take a look at some things to do there. And the first is starting with Prince Rupert, where you can check out the magnificent Northwest Coast Longhouse, which is overlooking Prince Rupert's Harbor. And it's home to the Museum of Northern BC, which has an exceptional collection of of First Nations art and culture, and it's open from nine to five every single day. Six dollars for adults, so cheap. Mm. Kids are only two dollars if they're 12 and under, and it is internationally known for its exceptional quality and the quality of exhibits. And it draws visitors from all around the world, and it's here in our own province. So if you want to go and visit this, they have a great website, museumofnorthernbc.com. Next, we're going to head to Smithers, where you can visit the Kassan Historical Village and Living Museum of the Gitson Aboriginal People. Now, the village is surrounded by really beautiful scenery, and it's located at the confluence of the Skeena River and the Buckley uh, Rivers. And it's got the beautiful mountain range in it's the gorgeous. background. It really is. So the totem poles and the structures have been very accurately reconstructed. And there's also a really beautiful shop there. It's very small, but has local native and arts and crafts. There's lots of campgrounds in the area so if you want to take your family up there and you can go online details are at ksan.org and now to tumbler ridge and i don't know any kid who doesn't love dinosaurs <laughs> and, uh, right, right? <laughs> and so you cannot miss going to the unesco global geo park to see the dinosaur fossil tumbler ridge was actually founded in the early 1980s as a as a mining community. Right. And now it's turned into this world-class destination for ecotourism. Magnificent diversity of outstanding and accessible mountain geology. Extraordinary waterfalls. In fact, there's 36 in the area. And literally dinosaur fossils and trackways that are unmatched in the known world. It's a very special place. And for details, you can go online to trgg.ca. And to Dawson Creek, where you can visit mile zero of the Alaska Highway, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary next year in 20, uh, 2017. Dawson Creek has a number of historical and heritage sites conveniently located along the Alaska Highway. So there's the My, uh, mile zero cairn, a uh, stone monument marking the original site where the Alaska Highway construction began, which was back in 1942, the Railway Station Museum, and the Dawson Creek Art Gallery. And I recommend that you do a walking tour of, the Do of Dawson Creek. It combines art and history, and your ki kids won't get bored right. if you do it that way. Lots of outdoor <laughs> recreation as well, fishing and hiking, golfing. There's lots of farmer's markets, plus campgrounds are everywhere. You just have to make sure that you plan it online. Details are online at hellobc.com slash Dawson dash Creek. And finally to Haida Gwaii, and I think our team is up there. That's yeah, right. Mark I just got off the plane. There, they yeah. are. Oh, they yeah. must be having a great time. This is um, a place where there is just so much to explore, but mm -hmm. the place that I think um, is Gwaihans National Park Reserve. It's located at the south end of Haida Gwaii, which is a group of 138 islands, almost 1,500 square kilometers. This huge UNESCO World Heritage Site has abandoned Haida Village's hot springs, amazing natural beauty, and some of the best kayaking in the world. If you have never done it, that's the place to do it. And archaeological finds have documented more than 500 ancient Haida sites, including villages and burial caves throughout the islands. The most famous is on Anthony Island, where these rows of weathered totem poles stare out at the sea. Just keep in mind the park can only be accessed by boat or plane. And from May to September, the number of daily reservations is limited, so plan well in advance. It's $20 per adult, $10 per child per night. And you can plan your visit at uh, the Parks Canada website, pc.gc.ca, and then just type in Haida Gwaii and information will come up. And you know what, this is the last of our series of six. Yeah. And if you want to visit, there's so many places, we couldn't touch them all. Um, you can go online to explorebc.ca and okay, get great. some good inspiration. And if you tune in tonight, you may see a, uh, a Mark Madriga in a body-hugging wetsuit. So. 
Yes. What? Mark was out <laughs> Do doing some stuff. Do we want to see stuff. that? <laughs> you want to see that? He All looks right. good. He's been working out. He looks oh, great. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Tuning in. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Claire.